YouTube, what the crap's going on? Heir of Carthage back right where we left off last time. Um, Hannibal is sieging Rome. Obviously something that never happened historically speaking. Uh, but it is now, and there's another army coming to reinforce him from the south. Another one that uh, just took Ariminum, or however you say that, the north. Our army in um, Illyria is quite secure and about to be far more secure as a good phalanx of sacred band hoplites is arriving. Egypt is under a pretty imminent threat here as I have two armies that have succeeded in taking two of the um, key settlements for Egypt, so they should be feeling that. My Seleucid allies uh, could be doing better, but honestly, they're they're holding out. Um, they're holding out for now, so hopefully they continue to do so. I'm curious. Let's go into my faction screen. Go back over here and kind of see what we got. Um, regions controlled 38, so we're only 12 regions from a victory as long as we capture Rome, we have 65 family members, and are, we've won 270 battles to only 13 lost, so we are ranked first in every category except for finance, which is pretty amazing, but it may just be because I spent all my money bribing a couple of episodes ago. You never know. Speaking of spending all of our money, let's go spend all of our money. <laughs> oh, man. Air is on a spending spree. Uh, Terran Tomb, looks like we finished what we were doing there. Do the uh, Secret Police HQ, keep this place happy. Let's do the Temple of Baal. Let's see what is getting larger because of how we've enslaved population sent it out here, but it's still got a long ways to go uh, before we can build anything. And Patavium uh, is able to get its next building. Let's do the sewers. Trier, we need to repair the walls, and we'll repair the practice range. We need to tear down the sacred grove of Freya here. Do that, and start working on a shrine to Baal. And Alexandria, we are doing basically the same thing here. So once we make the repairs, those places should stabilize a little. I believe we are ready to end a turn. I don't really have anything else that I want to move. I'm waiting on more Sacred Band to be trained there to go reinforce. I've got an army training at Massilia. My armies in Egypt kind of have to sit still temporarily while we hold the settlement. Speaking of holding, let's start training the, um, the town militia to hold uh, Memphis while we go after Thebes. So, good. I think that's... What do we need to do for this turn? I've still got training going on at Terran Tomb and Croton, which is what I want. As long as we're sitting on a pile of cash like this, we might as well be training a lot of forces. This is what I hoped for. I forced the Romans into a battle against me on open ground. I don't believe that this is going to go well for them. Could be wrong. Don't know. Let's see, they've got their general there, and then their faction leaders coming in as reinforcements. So we very well could end the SPQR faction right here and now. Look at this, seven command for Hannibal, <laughs> seven influence, only two management. This guy doesn't spend a lot of time managing settlements. He spends a lot of time taking them. The Romans also have some pretty uh, highfalutin commanders in this battle, so this should be fun. Should be quite fun, I'm looking forward to it. I would prefer to fight this type of battle rather than a siege. AI is no good at a siege, and they're just not as interesting. This will be the last for many, come what may. Our enemies will fall today. Yes, they will. Let's check out my pointy infantry. You all haven't gotten a lot of look at them. They're a really cool looking hoplite phalanx unit with that big scutum type shield. Obviously, their spear pokes right through it, but you know, we still like it. It still looks good. <laughs> it still looks good. Let's take these guys out of Phalanx. I've got my slingers that I'm going to use to support mainline Hannibal's bodyguard unit. Um, there could be units coming on from behind us. I'm going to actually deploy a little further back, just in case there is. I can turn around and kill them one off. Okay, there's none coming on directly behind me. Here is the Roman Armored General. Units, units, double time. 
I'm gonna try and goad them into a fight and kill their faction leader early. Not a lot of room to maneuver here, but the Romans apparently can't maneuver themselves out of a paper bag because they're coming right into an encirclement with their faction leader. Yes, I am girlishly excited about this opportunity. Oh, he's so dead. What is with this charge from the second cavalry unit there? Yeah, this Roman general uh, put up a pretty outstanding fight still, regardless, which I would expect from Roman faction leader with its... And this is an armor general. Did they just have the Marian reform? I think they just had the Marian reforms. So that's an armored general. The gods have smiled. The arrogant Roman leader is dead, and his men fear your wrath. All right, excellent. That is some fantastic development there. Enemies, these men are perfect. They are running from the battle in terror. That is a fantastic development. You know, you all can move. I, I, I did give you orders. Anytime. I mean, <laughs> like sitting here trying to confirm. Did I give them? Yeah, they got orders. They're just. That's a very long reaction time, I guess because maybe they were cheering or something at the death of the Roman general. Yeah, armored general. Principe. I don't see any other post-Marian units, but there is armored generals, and I believe that that happens after the Marian reform. All right. Good shape. Just gotta get my Libyans back over here. I'm gonna let them rest a little. Let's bring my slingers up to do a little bit of skirmishing with the Roman force. They have some Roman archers, which will outrange me, but I have a pretty steep numbers advantage here, and I'm hoping that we can lure the Roman generals into a YOLO, into our pointy infantry. Pointy infantry? How are we gonna say it? Maybe we should just call them pointy infantry because of the way I pronounce it and they have big pointy spears. I imagine this armored general is going to be fairly resistant to this slinger fire. Their shields and armor and two hit points. Oh, look at that. The ballista misfire hit their troops. Has yet to hit my own. Okay, we just got some good shots in that armored general. He's going to he's gonna be feeling it. A fall back. That one might hit me. Ooh, no overshot. I was a little scared that one would hit me. Let's leave this slinger bait right here. Come on, charge. I don't know what the, the Romans are like, literally, like, is this like their stoic end? They're just gonna march headlong into a phalanx unit? Surely not. Got hit by one of the uh, fire pots there. Oh, the Roman leader. He's screwed. They are armored, so again, they'll resist this a little bit for as long as they can, but yeah, they're, they are screwed. Their general is, is caught right here in a uh, phalanx type vice. There he goes. Another Roman leader dead. This Roman leader appears to be avoiding us out here, which is a pretty intelligent move. If we're going to be fair to the Romans, which I don't intend to be very fair to them, but, you know, I'm just calling it like it is. Okay, now he's screwed. I've got him pinched between my units. Let's get our pony infantry to start reforming. That uh, Roman general, armored general, came back from routing. Okay, we just pinched that Roman general there. He's likely to die and take this nut. Yep, up to three. So that's three Roman generals in one battle that have fallen to Hannibal. And the Roman archer just got hit. I'm going to counter charge this regrouped Roman bodyguard. Go after that onager. 
get these spearmen out here. Bring up these spearmen. Get Hannibal's bodyguard up here, and let's move our slingers up. Alright, got the archers and the regrouped bodyguard. Let's watch these ballista crew. Or onagers, sorry, let's watch these onagers. Get wiped out. Long shield cavalry again. Only light cavalry, but I mean it does give them the benefit of being a little faster. They're really not bad for light cavalry. Uh, I'd rather have sacred band cavalry, but they're much harder to uh, train than recruit and all that other other such. Let's swing these ones around. Some of you asked me how I do that drawing a line thing too. Select the units, hold the shift key, I hold the left shift key, and then you just right click and hold and draw the line, and your units will follow it. That is something that came in later Total Wars that they ported into uh, Rome Total War Remastered. So, in case anybody was wondering, it's a good way to uh, give your units a little bit of pathfinding. You can still use waypoints too. You can give a waypoint by just holding shift and just single right click. Should give your units waypoints. Assuming they added that to the game, yeah, I can see the waypoints there, so it's another way to do it. But I like drawing the line better. I don't know what is going on here. Equite and a cavalry auxiliate. I'm gonna see if we can get the Romans' attentions here. Pull our slingers over. I'm gonna start a slow march towards the Roman infantry column. Hit that cavalry auxilia. Get them, slingers. Cavalry auxilia has shields, but they're pretty lightly armored units, so I would expect them to take heavy losses to my slingers. Alright, let's fast forward a bit here and see if we can knock this Cavalry Auxilia out. I don't know what they were doing setting up way over here on my flank. They're quite exposed. I've kept a couple of units of long shields here in case the Equites charge me. Right now I'm going to focus the um, Cavalry Auxilia. They're going to do a Cantabrian Circle? I don't know if Cant... Uh, they can do a Cantabrian Circle. Perhaps those are Spanish auxilia, or Iberians, I should say. This game calls it Spanish, but Rome 2, we know them as Iberians. All right, what's left of the Roman army over here? Principe, Triari, Estadi, another armored general, a ballista, which surely has been firing unless it doesn't have the, the range. Haven't noticed it. Uh, like I said, artillery is pretty weak. Yeah, pretty darn weak, in fact. I'm gonna go off skirmish mode. I wonder if that'll tempt the uh, Roman cavalry in to a foolhardy charge. They are obviously still in skirmish mode. I want to... Got. I'm going to reposition a few things. Actually move my Poeni infantry to the flanks. And pull my Libyans into the center. Bit of a reform here. Right, my slingers are doing just fine. Here's the YOLO that I kind of hoped for. Countercharge the Equites, and they should be of little consequence in the fight against my Slingers. They are shaken. Move up the Poeni Infantry. Gauge the Peasants and the Hastati. Move up over here. Phalanx into the Triari. I need to get right in the face of this Principe because they're going to throw Javelins at me. There we go. And let's move our cavalry out and around to support. Pull up Hannibal. Alright, slingers up here. 
Alright. Get some support around behind these Triari. Try and route that war dog real quick. Equite is regrouped. Alright, let's recharge these Triari. My pony have gotten out of formation. It's not great. We shook the Triari, but we did not route them. They are wavering, wavering, wavering. Oh, come on, go! Broken. Alright, there we go. Excellent. Into the Velites. Get reformed with these plenty. Oh, the enemy general didn't die, but managed to rout my Libyan spears right there. It's unfortunate for us. Let's give him a charge. Let's keep Hannibal safe here. Hammered out those Princope. We need to kill him. There he goes. They got very close to death earlier, but then died this time. Hannibal, go run down those Triari. Run down as many of these Velites over here as I can. Alright. Not bad. Not bad. Pretty square victory for us. So the Battle of Latium, a resounding success for Hannibal, much as it was in history, any time he was able to pull the Romans onto an open battlefield, he succeeded, and um, much the case here. Rome still has a very small garrison, it would seem. We've been attacked by several Quinquiremes here, and that's not good because this is where our soldiers are at. Like our army is on board, I believe. Show embarked units. No, no. I thought this was where we had embarked units. Yeah, we do. Yep. So, hopefully we don't lose this. That was a fortunate victory for us. Doesn't look like we're going to be so fortunate here. Oh, wow. Wow, that is one salty navy. Holy cow, we didn't even have a ship sunk either, so I think I still kept all of my sacred pan units there. Holy RNG. Boy, that was very fortuitous for me. Very fortuitous for me. Julie, I fell back to their capital. The Romans don't have any more fight in them on this turn in. Britannia probably suing for peace. But I will not give it to them because they don't keep it and they're full of crap. So I don't need any big talk from, from them. So Hannibal at the gates. And Rome has very little that they can do about it. Um, I'm not going to even fight this one. I mean, there's no need to assault Rome. I mean, the battle was fought outside the settlement. I did save it in case they kill off Hannibal here. Which they very well might try. There it is, folks. Is ours, one. Hannibal the Conqueror. This enslaving Rome. So, we have conquered Rome. Lost the governor at Alexandria, so it's a good thing we moved his followers, because that didn't last much longer. We got a new merchant at Rome, or acquired a new merchant that was from Rome, yes. I believe. Yeah, here he is. Let's um, find a mission for him. Something worth his time is very little, it's worth much. Here we go, let's go trade in Pedavium. It's worth something, we'll take it. Uh, let's go break this blockade here. 
We broke that up. And... We need to retake Capua, though I have a port at Rome now, which is great. Speaking of Rome, let's take a look at what we get here. They have an urban barracks. So I can train everything as soon as I repair it. Um, speaking of, let's get that repaired. What kind of... Curia? There's an armor present. And let's look for the temples. Circus Maximus, so we can get Sacred Band Cavalry. Ooh, they have a temple here. They have a Colosseum. Siege Engineer. Do they not have a temple? They do not. What in the world? Wow. I don't know what to make of that. That's, that's a little bit strange, to be fair. Um... I want to get on some assassination missions. Julia. Kill the diplomat. I kill to please you. Nope. Oh, he got killed in the attempt. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, speaking of... Fortunate, very fortunate, in fact. Let's um get our ships to disembark because we are very likely to uh, have this navy potentially killed on uh, the next turn end. I'm going to try and get back to friendly territory, but I think the chevronage on those boats saved us. Alright, our reinforcing navy is underway. We can drop them off at uh, Capua. Excellent. We've got this navy headed to Rome here. So Rome is under Carthaginian control. Hannibal's dream come true. Dream come true. We made it happen, folks. We made it happen. Speaking of make it happen, we've got a lot of money. Um, <laughs> let's spend some of it. Ludus Magna. Carthaginian unlocks new traits and followers. Public order bonus due to law plus 15. That is a pretty cool building. Let's build it. Um, Lily Bayum needs the building or the settlement upgrade. The Royal Palace. Uh, in fact, let's check that. So, city expands. The Sturica didn't actually didn't show it there, so I may have missed it in a past turn. I don't know when or where. Um, but I obviously missed it because it's there. Let's build the farms. Scalabus. Get the armor. Massilia. I'm going to go ahead and put in an army barracks. we potentially going to be doing some recruiting from there. Asturica needs the settlement upgrade. Nepte is still too small, but it's growing because of the slaves that we put there. Watch my video get banned for me saying these things. That would be just like YouTube. I'm going to put in um, walls. Uh, the stone walls would be great anywhere we can, because if we get attacked by a phalanx-wielding faction, uh, the walls are basically a get-out-of-jail-free card. Right here, we got some buildings. Alexandria's still pretty pissed off, and can't say I blame them. Can't say I blame them. There's still a huge population at Alexandria. And, um... There we go, we've got the building stuff taken care of. I want to get this army put together. It's going to need some cavalry, so let's swing them over to this stack. And we've now got a nice phalanx and good support cavalry. We we'll need some units to support the flanks of this phalanx. A uh, couple of Libyan spears. In fact, we could get four of them, wouldn't be any problem, because we can train more here. And start training some more. We could use some slingers. We just don't have them at the moment. Uh, we could bring the Cretan archers, but I'm going to leave them there for the siege just in case. I can't recruit mercenaries, but there are more Cretan archers here. This army should be pretty potent uh, in and of itself. I'm going to go roll a siege at Corinth 
and see if we can get the attention of the Macedonians Attack! by moving an army deep into their territory because I'm feeling pretty confident that this army, I mean, <laughs> I may get humbled, we shall see, but I'm feeling fairly confident. Let's end another turn here. Got an idle fleet over here, not a big deal. Let's just move them and move them back. This one at Massilia. Again, move them, move them back. And end our turn. We have arrived to face the rebels who intelligently ran away, but unfortunately for them, there's nowhere left to run. I'm going to fight them so that we don't get unnecessary losses from the auto resolve. I have to admit, it was nice of the rebels to combine all their forces together and make it easier for me to kill them in one place, so I really appreciate their cooperation. We did not seek war. We are really appreciate their cooperation. Alright, they deployed up this hill. No big deal. Let's fast forward. Oh, that was another movement thing that I've had people ask me about. When you select a unit or multiple units, you can hold the uh, alt key, like I'm holding left alt, then I left click and drag. And then if you let go of the alt and hold the control, you can then rotate your army. You can let go of the control, go back to alt. You know what I mean? Like you can you can do either one. So again, it's a movement thing that's available in all newer Total Wars that they ported into this one, but very helpful way to move your troops in formation without them being in a group. You can obviously use the group formation, but um, anyway, just a way to do it. We got here Numidian Javelinmen. They won't stay to fight, so I'll just attack the peasants. Just let our infantry get in and take the initial fight. And we'll use our cavalry to smash the flanks. There we go. Let's run some charges. Crush these rebel scum. Alright, we've already collapsed one flank. There we go. Easily done. We're gonna run these rebels down just for good measure. There we go. A single peasant fleeing in the opposite direction there. Mowing these characters down. Very few survivors here. That's uh, the only better thing would be zero, but you know, I'll take it. Should be the end of the fight. Victory lies in your grasp, and there is thousand kills for twenty losses. Eh, sounds acceptable. I'll take it. I don't know where these rebel stacks come up with their ideas. It's like, hey, join the rebellion. We'll give you a pitchfork, and sooner or later, they're going to roll out here with an armored army where where you have been camped in the middle of the desert for weeks, no doubt suffering from terrible sunburn, um, sandy skin, probably rashes, starvation, thirst. Um, and you do all that stuff, and um, then they just send a well-armored, well-equipped army and crush you. So it seems like a good strategy, you know, for the rebels. It really, it really does. Seems like a, a sound strategy on their behalf to uh, get people to join these rebellions. Continue. I mean, you know it's going to work out well. Speaking of work out well, get rebels over here that also need a good old-fashioned crushing. I take some of my troops out of Numantia. Is there a reason why we can't attack them? Huh? Like, what is... What is even... What? We can't attack them. Well, that is news to me. Do we have any agents around here? Yep, 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 yep. That's not what I need. I'm looking for a diplomat. 
but I don't believe I have one. I, maybe we can get these guys with a diplomat? I don't know. Um, because it won't let me attack them. Interesting. Interesting development. Not seen that happen before. I'm gonna go ahead and do retraining here, even though I don't think any of these troops are, like, actually getting any numbers back. I think it's... Something else. Um, so a few more slingers required. Army on the move in Macedonia. Egypt slowly coming under better control. Getting town watch garrison set up so we can go take Thebes. We lost our commander at Alexandria. I do not see an Egyptian army between myself and them, so I'm going to go ahead and bring this general up here to Alexandria. You have some rebels back here that we'll want to deal with. Oh, with reinforcements. I need to drop this back here, actually. Send those two governors to Tarentum and Croton, respectively. And then the army to Capua, and we will have completely cut off what's left of the Romans. At that point, when the Romans are cut off and destroyed, boy, the Macedonians are really going to find out what a world of hurt that they truly live in. Our navy got away still, and I don't think we lost any ships, which is incredible. Some incredible maritime skill on the behalf of that navy. They are some salty old sea dogs to be uh, resisting multiple large enemy fleets like that without having had any ships sunk. I think the Julii are putting together some kind of last stand, maybe. Britain's up to shenanigans. Doesn't look like very effective shenanigans, but... Shenanigans, nonetheless. <laughs> Look at the uh, the Senate here. They've apparently just been gifted a whole bunch of new family members so that they can't go extinct. It's very convenient for them. It is terribly convenient. Now I can retrain these troops, and will. And I'm going to go drop my army over here. Excellent. Excellent. Take the fleet back to Carthage. And then our generals will be able to go to, like I said, Croton and Tarantum, respectively, on the next turn. We can now begin the siege of Corinth, and I kind of hope that the Macedonians bring in some reinforcements. We can get a big battle going here. I think it will work to my favor, because we will heavily outmatch them um, from a phalanx standpoint. Macedonians are going to regret having started this war. And look at this, my fleet gets back to the docks at Syracuse. It's able to re-equip, and then not only that, we're going to put a uh, Quinquerim into their midst. So they will become even more powerful. Still got Sacred Band training down here. That's enough for now. I don't think we need to continue any additional training at the moment. A rather large Julii army that we've got there. It could be fun to attack them, but probably lose a Rimnium, a Rim, a Riminum, however you. I, I, yeah, whatever. Jubal Barca has come of age. Interesting. So he is there with our faction leader, which is Masinissa Barca. And Cannibal is still the faction heir. Excellent. He can go by and govern the nearby Alicia. Neither one of these guys are at risk of dying anytime soon, so that'll give us some governors up in this part of the world. Got some rebels we need to get rid of here, but they're really not the end of the world at the moment. And then I can start marching. I'm going to wait till I get the second Sacred Band unit, and then I'll start marching them across there. The two units together can withstand any enemy attacks a little better. Let's see, Carolus. We finished the barracks. Uh, not a whole lot else we need to do from a. I'd like to have a better dockyard up there. Even I mean, the Romans are soon to be dead, though. Honestly, so not a lot of difference it's going to make. Uh. Better barracks. The awesome temples. Let's see, let's get the script 
Torum. Styrica, we don't need anything there. Nepte, growing nicely. Narbo, doing well. Work on some, actually, let's, let's sw swap it up here and put in the Academy. Lamonum, let's do the same thing. Drop in an Academy. Cyrene, which is growing nicely. And let's see here at Elysia. Not gonna hurt to have the army barracks there. I'm gonna do that because it could be a recruiting hub for the area. But uh, there we go. Better docks. Bigger temple. Um, let's do the roads. And then at Rome, we keep building up the larger temple to Baal, try and bring it under control. Alexandria was rioting, looks like. There's no buildings to repair, though there are some troops to retrain. A general can enter the settlement to help govern it. Not that the locals really wish to be governed in such a way. Let's take a look, though, at the tax situation. It is a normal tax rate. We could drop it to low for now to get them to shut up. Get a normal tax rate here, and I wonder if I exit the settlement with my main force and head towards Thebes. See what happens. Actually stayed happy without even changing the tax structure, so that's quite fortunate for us. Uh, we can potentially lose it to a bribe, but this allows me to get my army on the move. It looks like Thebes is rioting. It's convenient timing uh, for me. Quite inconvenient for them. Oh, this is going to pull their garrison out, too. Wow. Fortune favors the bold. This means that all of the Nile Valley is likely to be in my control here. We've almost recaptured our Punic homelands. The sun sinks in the west, this battle will be done. Whether the day goes well is in our hands. Oh, brave soldiers, let us fight well. All right, let's get our deployment started. Brave soldiers, indeed. Spearmen on the flanks. On a front line with the skirmishers. General in safekeeping. And cavalry flanks. Standard formation. Seems to be effective enough. The enemy reinforcements are coming from out here to our right. And they do have some chariots. They have an Egyptian chariot archer. Where their general is at. Captain, I should say, probably. I guess it could be a general. I don't know. Their desert axeman is going to get a uh, javelin day celebration. The javelins, unfortunately, on this game are not nearly as effective as they are on other Total War games, and I should probably... S yeah, you know what? Actually, I am going to save my javelins for the chariots. All right, javelin day is canceled. In fact, these axemen are going to get canceled here. All right, so... Charge up with my Iberians. Cavalry charge. Crush the desert axemen in one quick swoop here. It went from steady to shaken to wavering, and... Oh, back to shaken, really? You're not broken? Steady? Are you kidding me? This is the bravest Desert Axe unit that has ever been recruited in the history of the Nile Valley. The enemy flee. Chase the and that is a long history, by the way, folks. Okay. Those chariot archers are up on our flank. Let's go ward them off with some skirmishers. And that Desert Axe unit is going to be utterly and totally annihilated. 
It's down to its last Axeman, and now zero Axeman. Get some javelins into those chariots. Gonna soften them up a bit. If we let them get tired too, we'll have a better chance of catching them with their own cavalry. This will uh, this will soften them up. There we go. Got lucky and got a kill there too. Obviously, we lack the range to really have a great engagement there. But we got a Pharaoh guard. We'll use our uh, javelins on them, because I don't believe Pharaoh's guard carries shields. They do not. They are well armored, but they don't carry a shield. Makes them particularly vulnerable to missile fire. A decently powerful phalanx unit, but um, not strong enough to save themselves here. I'm going to move my skirmishers in the direction of that Pharaoh's guard. Our skirmishers are doing a good job of keeping that chariot archer busy and making sure that it accomplishes little or nothing. Run into Nubian Cav. Nile Cavalry is a little bit better. It's a heavy cav unit. I'm gonna click the attack orders here. Give it to him, boys! Swing all these units down here. I'm gonna jack these Pharaoh guards up with some skirmishers. And the chariot archers are still being kept at bay. Swing a unit over here to help out. Good fight for us in the middle. And the Pharaoh's guards are getting a Javelin Day celebration that they would rather not. See, without their shields, they um, they take a pretty disproportional amount of damage here. As to say, for instance, like a hoplite phalanx unit that has a, a large and you know very effective shield. Let's see, so let's unceremoniously escort all these units off the battlefield. There's some axemen still fighting here, and the pharaoh's guards have reached my skirmishers. But I'm gonna back up and refuse the engagement. Chariot archers are still out here wasting time with my skirmishers, which is perfectly acceptable to me. And we are escorting all of the enemy cavalry off the battlefield. And now attack the Pharaoh guard from behind. Pharaoh's guard. Let's check out Pharaoh's guardsmen here. Get some unpleasant javelins being launched at them from well up a hill. Taking some pretty hefty damage. They're now being charged from behind by heavy infantry. While taking javelins to the face. And they have routed and will be mopped up. Which leaves just the chariot archers. As is typical for these battles. Desert Axeman has regrouped over here though. I'll send my infantry on a mission here. And we'll need to deal with the Chariot Archers, but all in good time. No rush. To reroute those Axemen. Okay, now we just need to rest all of my cavalry. And then we should be able to catch the Chariot Archers, who will be quite tired. And even honestly, if we can just get close enough to him, it'll probably be enough to route them. So round shields recovering their stamina quite nicely. The chariot archers are going to come up and spend the rest of their ammunition. Makes sense. Actually not a bad plan for them. And they will have quite a lot of ammunition, if I remember this game right. They're targeting an Iberian whose shield is... Gonna be somewhat vulnerable. We're moving our cavalry, and we will pincer these chariots. Cavalry. 
Okay. The process of gaining a positional advantage. Oh, my skirmishers almost entirely died over here. They might if the uh, chariot archers keep firing. In behind them. Yeah, they're in trouble. They are in trouble. As long as I can cut off a retreat from this direction, I've got them surrounded. And rest in pieces, chariot archers. There we go. So the chariot archers were of little consequence since they weren't threatening any melee. Had they been used to effectively mop up a flank, you know, while I was busy elsewhere, then, I mean, that's where chariot archers can be quite good. But, um, skirmishers are a waste of time for their ammo and for their melee. Not a unit that they want to be engaged with. Get some... How come I can't build sapping stuff? Possible. Okay, well. Maintain the siege. There's no mercenaries to be hired, but... Thebes will, um, undoubtedly soon be under our control. Alexandria is calming down. Training more troops at Memphis, so... Our barbecue brigade uh, will be ready soon. Yes, folks, I'm aware that Memphis, Tennessee is different than Memphis and Egypt. Just having some fun. Um, in case anybody's wondering. I may be a redneck, but I do know that. <laughs> Excellent. I think we're in really good shape here. Rioting at Alexandria is the only thing we're being notified of. Um, and nothing big going on elsewhere other than just lots and lots of victory. The sweet smell of victory. 39 regions, and we should be in control of Rome at the end of this turn, which may trigger the short victory. No doubt the Romans are triggered, period. Look at the SPQR, they're like, hey, remember that war we had? Uh, as much as this would be fun, I'm not doing it. You're going Until to die. Next time. <laughs> You're going to be extincted. Look at all their family members there, holy cow. Is that so that they make sure that the SPQR don't get extincted by loss of family members? I don't know if that's like some game function because like all of a sudden they had like six or seven family members at Capua. Ah, this is what I wanted. This is what I wanted. Leonatos, not to be confused with Leonidas, but um, maybe he wants to be confused with them, has attacked us. And that's going to leave the garrison, which... <laughs> oh, sorry, Captain Pol... Polycratus or whatever is open the door for wannabe Leonidas here. That's what I'm going to call him. Wannabe Leonidas. Let's fight this battle. Maybe we'll get lucky and uh, get a commander promoted out of this fight. That would be pretty spectacular. I don't know what our odds are of that. So I'm not really sure of the odds there. Today is a good day for death. If we are to die, then let us do so honorably, and let us send many of our enemies howling into the afterlife. All right. Uh, I'm pretty sure the main Macedonian force is going to come in from behind me. So I'm going to deploy prepared for such... And I cannot wait to get some sweet phalanx on phalanx action here. There we go. Macedonian cavalry should be significantly better than mine. My infantry will be significantly better than theirs. Yeah, they're coming from over here. Um, infantry line. Get reacted. Let's move and let's pull this cavalry this way. All right, I was a little bit off on my positioning, but not disastrously so. We have a light lancer unit moving quickly. Keep an eye on them. Interrupt them with some Libyan spears. There we go. That's gonna screw over those lancers. Pretty quo. Oh gosh. Boy, that uh, light lancer just went straight for it. Units, this 
General is the perfect enemy. He does not All right. Macedon still continues that YOLO legacy that they were given by Alexander. The enemy flee. Chase them from the field and give them no rest or pity. There we go. Wow, we got charged by another unit over here. Let's get my round shields out of that fight. They might rout. Is they're going to get attacked in the rear. I'm trying to screen their retreat. That was a pretty heavy cavalry attack. Let's turn around and head back to our own troops. Now comes the fun part. Which is the phalanx fight. It's a Macedonian heavy cavalry there. Phalanx charge. Libyan spearmen, you may charge. My captain safe here. And let's throw into this cavalry fight because we have Libyan spear support. We outnumber their phalanx. And we outquality them. So that is a double bad position for Macedon to be in. Let's watch this. My sacred band are going to make mincemeat of these. Phalanx Pikesman. Phalanx Pikeman. Not Pikesman. Swing my flank out here. Doing quite well on this flank. We've driven back the Macedonian Heavy Cavalry. And the Phalanx fight has already gone very poorly <laughs> uh, for Macedon, much as I expected. Oh, check this out. They're doing the, the, the Pike Moonwalk right here. Look at him back it up. Boy, Michael Jackson would be proud. Proud to know that his moves were so great that they traveled back in time. Oh yeah, Macedon is getting owned. At their pipe, they are gonna get absolutely mulched here. More Sacred Band Pikes coming. These are Royal Pikemen. They are just massively outnumbered. Even Royal Pikemen would lose one-on-one -on -one in this fight. Yeah, Royal Pikemen would still lose that fight one-on-one. -on -one. Alright, the Macedonian General died. We have a chance to kill these phalanx and royal pikemen who are fleeing. Is this unit out here a peltist? Go ahead and go get it. Excellent. This is fantastic. This is exactly what we wanted. The Macedonians, like I said, their advantage is in cavalry and missiles. Um, the Macedonian faction in this game does not have an infantry advantage on Carthage by nature. It's possible they do just based on recruitment, but by, by nature the factions, they do not have an infantry advantage on Carthage, not by any means. Uh, they definitely have a missile advantage with both archers, Cretan archers. They have Peltist, which are, in my opinion, better than the Libyan javelinmen. They have access to better cavalry. Macedonian cavalry is a nice heavy cav. Companion cavalry is an excellent heavy cav. Um, Sacred Band may be slightly better in a melee than a companion cavalry. I don't remember, but I know the companion cavalry hit hard on the charge. Um, so Macedon's advantage would certainly be in cavalry against Carthage and missiles. Uh, and they would want to push that advantage. Let's see. That's certainly how it was in multiplayer. I would expect it to remain true were the AI competent enough to make something of it in single player. Down grows. Coming. How long do we have to hold Rome? I mean, we are in control of Rome, are we not? You figure that that would have been like some kind of cutscene, some kind of like big announcement here. Does it show the victory conditions? Huh? I thought they would have made a big deal out of us capturing Rome. 
maybe it has to wait like a certain number of turns. I, I don't know. Kind of like Shogun 2 or something. Got one more slinger we're recruiting to this army. Let's go stand on the bridge, wait for our slinger, and then we can move this army. Got our two sacred band that can continue to try her to help with reinforcement and replenishment. This town is in need of growing before it can be of a lot greater value to me. I'd say this episode went very darn well for us. We captured Rome. Palma is getting quite upset here. We could always just put a larger garrison there. Drop a couple Libyans. Oh, Palma. I mean, we could lower the tax rate, but they're not riding, so... Should be alright. Alexandria is now considerably happier. I'd like to hold a higher tax rate on them, but it's probably not going to happen. We should be able to take Thebes here, too, on a pretty standard auto-resolve. Assuming we don't get cheated. I saved it just in case. Alright. Slave the population of Thebes. This settlement is now very unhappy, but there we go, man. That was a productive episode. We got some work done there. <laughs> some serious work done. And then I'm going to take care of a few things at Thebes. So let's first get... Let's get both of these extra commanders that I have here. Yeah, because this guy I want commanding. Let's, I'm going to start them both in Croton, and then in the next turn I can move the next one over. Uh, again, this army is not particularly large, but it shouldn't have a problem facing what it's going to run into. I can always pull um, some of these Poeni infantry over here. Tarantum will not still be particularly easy to coerce through bribery. And I don't see an agent sitting here ready to commit that, but let's we can kill this merchant. Get some practice. There we go. Got him. All right. Well, things are looking good for Carthage. Things are looking good. We got money coming out of our eyeballs. We're in control of Rome. I mean, we're able to return all the salt that Rome gave to us, and then some. I'd say we're in a pretty solid position. What the heck is Scalabus upset about? Again, if they act like they want to riot, I'll lower the taxes, but until then, enjoy your taxes. Um, <laughs> boy, Air is a lot crueler on the game than he is in real life, because Air does not enjoy paying all those taxes in real life, but I sure did it to them. What a corrupt leader I am. All right, here we go. Try here. Um, let's get some roads built. Get our reinforcements quicker. Temple to Baal and Alexandria. Continue to settle them down. And in Thebes... Awesome Temple of Set. Whoa, we can trade sacred. We can train sacred band from this. That's pretty cool. I don't want to keep it though, because we get a culture penalty from it. I guess we could just repair some stuff for now, and then replace it later. I mean, it's not like we have to be in a huge hurry. Repairing it will actually probably help bring the settlement under better control. Like even with the culture penalty. All right, we succeeded in our assassination mission. There we go. So all of the Nile Valley is now in control of Carthage. Our homeland, uh, which would probably be close to Antioch, somewhere in this area. We'll call it Sidon. Who knows, maybe if we get lucky and take Sidon, we'll actually re retake control of our homeland. Boy, Macedon is in trouble. They're trying the same shenanigans that Julia did earlier, which is when they got in trouble, they just turned to fleet spam. Which is not going to work for them. I'm going to bring a fleet over and pay them a visit. Pay them a visit that they won't soon forget. Um, speaking of, can we retrain these ships? Yes, we can. And then this navy. Kill a rebel navy here. We sunk it. Excellent. Well, these are some uh, salty veterans right here. And speaking of salty veterans, let's go after this Roman fleet, too. Just because we can. 
Yeah, this fleet has... They've got it going on. They've got some serious veterancy. Gold chevronage. This army is now very well equipped. Um, to siege Capua. Hannibal firmly in control of Rome. Let's see, idle resources. We have an inactive diplomat. Where is he at? Here. Yes, mighty lord. Let's continue to do a little scouting here. So Macedon has quite a few armies up around Thessalonica. Sire. I can see everything they have here in the south. Let's go check this mountain pass. Nothing there. Okay. All right, things are going swimmingly. Very smooth. Almost too smooth. Something's bound to go wrong here soon. Maybe the Seleucids are testing the world's first thermonuclear bomb. They're going to drop it on Carthage, and this whole thing was a ruse. You're still having a pretty tough fight with Egypt, but like I said, Egypt is now going to be significantly weakened after what I did to them. Losing their three bread and butter settlements is not going to go over well in the long run. May not hurt them a lot at the moment, but I said certainly won't help them in the long run. My army still has Corinth sieged, and it could be there for quite some time. But I mean, let's be honest, I think we can take the settlement. Got a couple of sap points and some towers. Let's assault the city. Assault the city. Yeah, we can just auto resolve this. All right, I am gonna leave it there. That is an episode right there. We took Corinth, we took Thebes, we took Rome. Glorious victory. Put these guys in a world of hurt. And we have taken over the statue of Zeus at Olympia. We get the sweet music. Plus four bonus to population loyalty in all settlements. Great Temple at Olympia houses a magnificent gold and ivory statue of Zeus, the father of the gods, possibly the greatest statue ever made in the Greek world. The temple itself was built by Libon in 450 BC, and although impressive in itself, it was not felt to be sufficiently great for such an important site. The Athenian sculptor Phidus, however, that was given the sacred task of constructing a truly majestic statue of Zeus. His skills were such he created a seated Zeus. It looked as if it would knock down the temple if he ever stood up. The effect of this 13 meter tall figure was an awe-inspiring, exactly as intended. Sweet, so we got the statue of Zeus at Olympia. As far as other world wonders we could collect, we do have the Colossus of Rhodes um, that we could get to. The Greeks are still our allies. That is good news. We have an ally. I wonder if we can get them to become a protectorate. Possibly so, especially if we offered them something juicy like control of Corinth or Athens. Might be able to convince them to become a protectorate. Um, so yeah, good episode here. I think we're going to call it. Um, boy, we are here in the business. Under captures, city grows. Just a merchant had some rioting at Thebes, no doubt. But with the, uh, the temple now repaired here, the people will actually stop rioting. And we can train Sacred Band from a non bail oriented temple, which I didn't know. So that one's going to be news to me, news that I appreciate. And uh, here we are. We've got the world under our heel for the most part. Carthage is at the center of it. Air of Carthage signing out for now. I will see you soon with some more action.